Okay, so sex linked traits have been discovered in the early 19th century. So they found out that, that some genes are actually found on the sex chromosomes. So if they are found on the sex chromosomes, therefore the sex of the individual can actually affect how they are expressed. And this is as opposed to autosomal chromosomes. Remember, males and females have similar autosomal chromosomes, but males and females will have different sex chromosomes. Males would have X and Y, while females will have two X chromosomes. So this was discovered by, by Morgan in Columbia University back in 1910. So he found out about these via the breeding of your Drosophila melanogaster. This is your scientific name for your fruit flies. So your fruit flies right here, they're right here, yeah. So here, he observed their eye color. They are good genetic subject because they are simple, they have only few chromosomes, so it's very easy to observe. They were also, they had a very quick lifespan as well. In around a week or so, you could already breed one whole new generation. Another two weeks, but sorry, I stand corrected. It's about two weeks. One lifespan is around two weeks. So, they also have distinct chromosomes between females and males. Now, this is what the chromosomes for people look like. Now, all these are autosomal, ranging from pair 1 up until pair 22. While pair 23 are, is where you can find your X and Y chromosomes. So these are your sex chromosomes. This determines if you will be male or female, but biologically speaking. So, for Morgan, he started breeding two breeding red eye females, oh look, it's that fly, and through breeding white males. So, ito my red eyes, ito my white eyes. And then what he found out was that his offspring were 100% red eye, composed of 50% male and 50% female. Now, he, he made these two breed with each other, and what he got was 100% red eyed females and 50% red-eyed males, when 50% white-eyed males. Now the question here, anong meron dun sa males such that they were the ones who were able to express having white eyes, while the females were, did not have any sort of white eye occurrence. Oh, sorry, delete yung isa. So here we can see that sometimes there are traits wherein the sex or of the organism matters. The sex or of the organism can affect how it is expressed. So what's up with Morgan's flies? Let's examine them further. So if we were to put them in a tree, say like this, we would get the following. So we had 100% red eyes. But are these exactly their genotypes? Let's determine. So upon mixing them together, so you're sure they're 100% red eyes. But for the next generation, if we were to breed them together, we would get the following results. So one of them would have white eyes. But this is not exactly true. Because remember, what we got was that males were the ones who had expressions of the white eyes. And here, when we did this cross, we do not consider the sex of the individual. So in humans and other mammals, there are usually two sex chromosomes, X and Y. And uh, for females, we have two X chromosomes. So well, that's what we have. And that this tends to have gene redundancy such that in autosomal chromosomes. What gene redundancy um, does is that it tends to lessen the occurrence of bad genes because we have two copies. Suppose the bad gene is found on the X chromosome, we have better chances of not exhibiting that bad gene because we have an extra copy. And oftentimes, bad genes are usually recessive in nature. 
as opposed to having an X and Y chromosome, this tends to develop the organism as a male. Now there is two redundancy. So oftentimes, um, when we have an organism, when we breed two organisms together, a male and a female, there's a 50% chance that an organism will be female, and there's a 50% chance that the resulting organism will be male as well. Now, with regards to Morgan flies, this is theoretically how we can explain the genetics behind the transfer of being white-eyed or red-eyed. Let's try to link. Let's try to link the traits to the X chromosome. So with that, a red-eyed female would have two copies of it, while a white-eyed male would have only one copy of it. Remember, it is X linked. So therefore, it's not found on the Y chromosome. That's why there are no letters attached to the Y. That's why it's only in superscript in the X alleles. So since it's white, our, um, since our dominant trait is red, that's why we have big R's representing red, while we have small R's representing white. So let's try to put them on our square. Remember, hindi mo siya pwede paghiwalayin. These are X-linked traits. So wherever the X will go, the attached allele for the eye color will follow as well. So let's try to mix them together. Same banana. Same banana. Same banana. Okay. Now how do we interpret this? Now, this one is a male or a female organism. This will have to be female because there are two Xs. But is the female red-eyed or white-eyed? They will have to be red-eyed, but they carry they carry an allele for being white-eyed, but they do not express it. Therefore, we can call them as carriers. Well, this male individual right here will have red eyes. Same here, a male with red eyes. Here, a, a carrier female. So all of them will have red eyes. Now, if we mate these two together. The following genotypes the carrier mated with the normal the normal red-eyed male we get this cross so we have a female who is red-eyed not a carrier for white-eyed a red-eyed male a carrier female red-eyed but a carrier for white-eyed and we have interestingly a white-eyed male so this is the proper explanation as to how genes, rather sex-linked traits, are being inherited across different organisms. So we are here we have the proper ratio that was exhibited in Morgan's experiment. He's correct. Very good. Quack. Moving on. Now, there are a few other genes other than the SRY. When we say SRY, this is the sex-determining region. The presence of the Y chromosome determines if you will be male or female. Because if you don't have a Y chromosome, obviously you will have to be female. It's the master regulator for maleness, oftentimes responsible for the, con for the control of many male hormones. Now for the X chromosome, this, uh, this goes for other genes beyond sex determination. And oftentimes mutations occur in the X chromosome, for example, hemophilia. Color blindness, the sheen muscular dystrophy. So, if you think about it, if you only have one copy of the X chromosome, the moment you express the following traits, the following you manifest the genes for these traits, you will automatically express them. So, usually, yung mga ganitong diseases, disorders, bihira sa females, but more common in males. Because again, they only have one X chromosome. So, the moment they express it, Tamaan agad sila. As compared sa ating females na, we have two X chromosomes. So the presence of an X chromosome with healthy genes will cancel out the expression of these recessive disease-related genes. So these are just a summary of the different uh, diseases or disorders found in the X chromosome. There's a lot of them. So to be sex-linked usually means to be X-linked, to be linked to the X chromosome. That there are more than 60 diseases traced to the X chromosome. 
One example is hemophilia. Here we can see the, uh, the pedigree analysis for Queen Victoria. If you would notice, marami sa kanila ang may hemophilia. Uh, in this case, the ones that are black, those are the ones having hemophilia. And to be circle means you are female. To be square means that you are male. And if you would notice, ang daming black na squares, meaning maraming males that have been that are afflicted with hemophilia. But how is hemophilia being inherited? It's similar to that of your uh, red eye, white eye phenomenon in flies. It's also sex linked. So instead of expressing them like this, you express the alleles like this. Because we have to consider the sex of the individual as well. So this organism is a female who is a carrier. This organism is a male, a healthy male, no hemophilia. So with that, the female can pass on two alleles, a healthy one and a hemophiliac one. While the male can pass two alleles, the a healthy X one, and then uh, a Y. So the Ys do not have anything to do with hemophilia. So here, let's put the male here, then the female organism here. So combine them together to get the following. Uh, we have a healthy female, no hemophilia whatsoever, no hemophiliac gene, healthy male, uh, carrier female, healthy but can carry hemophiliac genes. And finally, we have a hemophiliac male. This means that they are a carrier for the gene. And this one means that they have the disease. If they bleed out, their blood does not clot quickly. So therefore, they can die because of blood loss. In your problem for people suffering from hemophilia. Another one is color blindness or Daltonism. So people who have normal vision can see this as 35. People who are colorblind will not see the difference. So nahihirapan silang madistinguish ang red at ang green colors. So still more examples for Daltonism. There are various tests for colorblindness. <coughs> you can search some online to check if you're colorblind. Now moving on, we go towards sex influence traits. Now, for sex influence traits like male, like <coughs> Like male pattern baldness, it's not linked to the X chromosome, but the sex of the individual can change the phenotype, the expression of the phenotype. So it's an autosomal, it's an autosomal trait influenced by sex hormones. Usually around going 30 years old, nararamdaman na mga tao yan, specifically males. And that is usually expressed in dominant alleles. So for males to be bald, it has to be big B, may big B dapat. Well, for females, it has to be homozygous dominant. So kung heterozygous dominant, express pa rin sa males ang baldness. So it's gonna look like this. We would notice mas malala sa males. While sa females, usually around the center lang. These are the allele keys for baldness. So you can always refer to this side, you can always go back to this one. Another one that expresses the same phenomenon is having a white forelock. <coughs> it's also sex influenced. Now, aside from that, going beyond sex, we can also say that the phenotype is controlled by, both by the environment and the genes. Human skin color is influenced by, is influenced by genetic and environmental conditions. People who live in the northern hemisphere will oftentimes have a lighter their skin color because they are less exposed to UV rays. Well, for people for people living in the southern hemisphere, we will have darker skin because we are ex more exposed to UV rays. And it also affects the type of UV ray that uh, that you experience or that you are exposed to. In a similar way, for foxes, if uh, foxes found in the north will tend to have um, Whiter pigmentation, while those living in the southern areas will tend to have darker colors. Even for flowers, depending on the blooming season, it can also affect how they look like. So even in soil, even the pH of the soil can affect the colors of hydrangea. 
So let's just do one example here. We're at the checkpoint. We're going to do an example problem. Dipper, who is a non-bald man, marries Wendy, a carrier for baldness. What are the chances of them having a bald son, a bald daughter, a bald son, non-bald son, and a non-bald daughter? So these are their genotypes. Again, Dipper, the man, is non-bald, while Wendy is a carrier. So that's how we write their genotypes. Again, determine different alleles that you will have to cross. Determine the alleles first before you do your Punnett square. But if you're gonna do the, if you're going to do the fork line method, just do what we did in the hybrid as well. <coughs> do monohybrid squares and then apply the branching method. So this is what the. <coughs> This is what the squares will look like. So just put them at the side and cross them together. We have this genotypic ratio, then we have this phenotypic ratio. So for a girl and non-bald, we have a 50% chance, but they are both carriers in this case. For, bo for the boy, it will have to be one of them is bald. This one is bald. Now we have two non-bald girls right here. Boy is bald, one fourth. <coughs> we also have a non-bald boy right here. Well, this one we have a heterozygous red-eyed female is mated with a white-eyed male. The other the two offspring, how many are red-eyed, how many are red-eyed males, red-eyed females. White-eyed males, different white-eyed females. So these are their genotypes. As opposed to sex influence traits, you do not have to foil them. Just simply plot them on the sides of your square since they are linked to each other. This will be our genotype. This will be our genotypic ratios. This will be our phenotypic ratios. Now, I'm going to bring out my pen and let's try to answer, to answer the following. How many will be red-eyed males if there are 32 offspring? So 32 times, which one? 32 times, oh sorry, no, 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 not this one, this one, 32 times 1 fourth, what is 1 fourth of 32? That will have to be 8. Red-eyed female, similarly, have to be 8. White-eyed males, yeah, still 8. White-eyed females also will be 8. So if you notice, for a female to be white-eyed, there has to be two small r's. Or for the male, there only has to be one small r. And back to my pointer. So that's it for the last part of our video. This will be the fourth video out of four. So, again, the worksheets are due on March 17, submit by January. And if you have any missing requirements, and they contact your teachers, especially for those who are missing their performance tasks. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay hydrated, stay hygienic. And again, if you don't need to go outside, don't.